So in today's video, we'll be going over how pre-signed URLs work and how they allow our Next.js application to allow uploads and retrievals from our S3 bucket. When a user uploads an image onto your Next.js application, it's going to need a pre-signed URL in order to make the upload to S3. When this pre-signed URL gets generated, it's going to take a combination of all the metadata associated with the upload request. It's going to take that metadata and it's also going to use the secret access key to generate a signature. And with the signature, this is how AWS and S3 is going to verify and validate that this upload request came from a trusted user. When this upload request gets sent to S3, S3 is going to validate the signature of this request. It can do this because it has access to the private access key associated with this IAM user. It can take in all the metadata associated with that request and reconstruct the signature that was created by the AWS SDK. And if the signatures are equal to each other, then that means we verified that this Next.js application is indeed this IAM user. S3 will then check the policies and the permissions that this IAM user has on this S3 bucket. It'll see that this IAM user has access to upload images to the S3 bucket, so then it'll accept the request. So this is how your secret access key is used to generate a pre-signed URL. All right, so I'm in my Next.js application, and this is the upload file Utah method that I call whenever I upload an image. So now what I wanna do is instead of this being a method, I want this to be an API endpoint instead. So here I create an API endpoint called slash API slash S3 slash RGB slash upload URL with a get request here. And in here, I'm returning a hard-coded response for my pre-signed URL. So in my file upload util method, I do an await fetch to that endpoint, and then I extract the pre-signed URL out of that. We now need to initialize the S3 client so then that we can actually utilize the AWS SDK to generate those pre-signed URLs. So then the first thing we wanna do is we want to install the AWS SDK and the request pre-signer into our application. All right, so here I initialize the S3 client for my application. And what I'm doing here is I'm passing in the region where my S3 bucket is stored, and I'm also passing in the credentials. So this is very important because when you generate the pre-signed URL, you're gonna pass in the secret key and this S3 client in order to generate the signature to authorize and authenticate yourself that you are a specific IAM user. So now that we have this S3 client, let's go into our API endpoint and generate the pre-signed URL. So here I have a command called put object command, and you wanna pass this into get signed URL. So what this command is telling the S3 client what kind of command that you want to do. So in our case, we want to upload an image onto S3. So we want a put object command. With this helper method, you pass in the S3 client and a specific command that you want to do and an expiry time. So if you have this pre-signed URL and you use it within 60 seconds, then the upload would work. But if you use this pre-signed URL and upload an image after the 60 seconds, that means that the pre-signed URL has expired and AWS S3 will reject your request. So that is what this code is doing here. So then if I go into my web app again and then upload another image, you'll see that I'm outputting an actual pre-signed URL here. So this is good and all, but here we are hard coding the object key. So if we have two images that get uploaded, then because they have the same object key, they're gonna override each other. So we're gonna need to pass in either the file name or some sort of unique identifier so that when we generate the pre-signed URL here, we can pass in that specific object key or that file name in place of a hard-coded value. So here we're just grabbing the object key value from the search params. And if it doesn't exist, we'll throw an error here. But if it does exist, we'll pass in this object key value here into the put object command. So then if I go to something like Postman and then I do random test value and I hit this endpoint, you'll see here in the pre-signed URL that this is the object key that we're getting here. So now that we updated this fetch request to have the object key search param, if we upload an image now, it should give us back a pre-signed URL, which it does here. So this try catch block uploads the image onto S3. It takes that pre-signed URL and it gives it a put method. And then we take in the uploaded file from the user and then we put it into the body of that API call. And then we make that request to S3. So now when we upload that image onto our web app, it should upload it to S3. But unfortunately, we're getting these error messages. And if you read the error message, it says that localhost 3000 has been blocked by Core's policy. Basically what's happening with Core's policy is whenever you have an S3 bucket and you wanna do upload requests or get requests or something like that, you need to whitelist specific URLs and domains that can do those requests. If you don't whitelist the domains, then pretty much anyone from any website can make requests to your S3 bucket. So thisbadwebsite.com can try to make a request to your S3 bucket. So what you need to do is that you need to specifically configure your S3 bucket to allow requests from localhost and from your web app. All right, so this is my infrastructure as code where we created the S3 bucket for our RGB splitting uploads. And then here in this line of code, we are creating a course configuration for that S3 bucket. So here we're passing in that bucket ID name and we're creating these course rules. So we're allowing all headers, we're allowing all of these methods, and then we're also allowing this specific origin. So here, if we're in our development stack, 
we want to whitelist localhost 3000. And that's because when you're developing locally and you run npm run dev, you are hosting your web app on localhost 3000. So when you make that upper request onto your S3 bucket, that is kind of like the source origin of where that request is coming from. So because of that, that is where you want to whitelist um, your application here. But if you're deploying to a production environment, and in our case, we're using Vercel and the default Vercel.app domains and source origin, we want to use this origin as the allowed origins in all other environments here. So here, allowed origins is just whitelisting what domains can make a request to our S3 bucket. All right, so now if you run Pulumi up and you deploy these changes onto your AWS account, you should be able to upload images onto your S3 bucket. All right, so now I refresh my page and I upload an image. So let's use this one here. And then if I go into my AWS account and I go into S3 and I go into my bucket here, I should see that I have this image uploaded here, deepseekwordmark.svg. So now we successfully allowed our users to upload images on Terra Web and then we can take that upload image, generate that pre-signed URL, and then put it into S3. All right, so let's quickly recap all the code that we just wrote down. So here we're creating an S3 client and we're giving it our access key and our secret access key that we stored in our environment variables. Then in our upload file utility method, we're calling an API route that we created. And in this API route, we're passing it the object key and then we're taking that object key and we're putting it into the put object command. So then here we pass in that S3 client and then we give it an expiry time of 60 seconds. So after 60 seconds, this pre-signed URL becomes invalid. We return that pre-signed URL as part of the API response. And then we do a fetch request and a put request with that given pre-signed URL. And then we pass up the file and we put it into S3. And then we also ran into some course issues where we had to define course configurations for our S3 bucket to allow all these methods and allow these domains as an allowed source origin. And then with all that, we were able to upload all these images onto our S3 bucket here. So with that, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.